come with us where the corn is popped and the throwback Thursdays never stop. It's a magical land not far away. All you have to do is just press play. So hop on the couch and close your eyes. Gonna party like it's 99. Join us, watch the movies of our lives with Blockbuster Eyes. Welcome to Blockbuster Wives, where your two favorite 90s babies talk about movies from the era of a certain blue and yellow video rental store. I'm your host with the most late fees, Shay Baby. And this is Stacy, not always kind, but always rewinds. And you're listening to Blockbuster, Blockbuster Wives. Wives. We're sitting at a different angle today? Yes. It feels more like, a fi- I feel like we need a camera in front of us. Yeah. You know? Always. And no, like, <laughs> like, what's the difference between today and every other day? Have we talked about... <laughs> Your plan for filming your own life? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe you're bringing this up. Yes, we were so lucky to be in the generation <laughs> where like handheld cameras became a thing you could take with you really everywhere, constantly. Mm-hmm. And Shay loved it. She's a star baby, all right? The camera loves her. <laughs> and I just remember her telling me one day, she's like, what if I just like, I just like recorded my entire day and then i could go home and just like watch it and i said okay but when would you sleep yeah. and i was like <laughs> when i'm dead i was like wait i didn't think about it <laughs> see this is why stacy and i are so perfect together because truly i come up with like the wildest best if i do if i if i may say you just have one small problem I just, which is one small issue that like cannot be fixed one little tiny flaw <laughs> and she points it out like so effortlessly she's like wait but don't you have to sleep and i'm just like dun, dun, dun. that just shows you how obsessed with sleep i am i'm like but what about sleep <laughs> when i come home i just want to sleep wait i remember being like no i'll still sleep and you were like yeah but like if you're recording your whole day and then you watch your whole day, that would be like... It ain't gonna like, work. Yeah, like, that's a lot, like, when would you have time to sleep? I'm like, no, I, I, I would have time to sleep. I'll sleep and watch it at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> And then vlogs were created, so... Yeah, we really were proto-vloggers, if mm. I do say so myself. You know what? Actually, yes. Mm-hmm. You taught me it's Baxed. Yes, we did like a whole Dude, documentary. That was like the first <laughs> vlog I've ever seen, and we did it. <laughs> that like nobody watched. <laughs> I watched it so oh, much. Oh, man. You have... Dude, and it was really good. Yeah, we were truly just doing it for the love of the game. Like, mm-hmm. there wasn't really, like, YouTube stars back then. You, no. you didn't... I don't even think going viral was, like, a concept yet at no. this time. Like, no. you just sent things out into the ether, and there they were. I, I never thought about this before. We literally made, like, the first vlog, I want to say. The first one ever. And yeah, I like spent hours editing it together and adding music and slideshows. Dude, it was so good. There were certain parts where she would like close up on pictures. Oh, and we did a whole intro of our like background. Did, and you, see, I don't even remember that. Yeah, okay. You and I talked to the camera what? at the very beginning. We did and we're confessionals? like, what's up, guys? We're about to go to Utah. And like you did a whole background wow. on what, or no, it wasn't Utah, it was Colorado. Colorado. Whoops. Um, you did a whole background on like what this part of Colorado is. I still remember you being like, which is just a little Mormon sur- suburb out of Denver, Colorado. Wow. Like I still remember I was, like educating yeah, the, the zero masses. people who are watching it. <laughs> the masses, AKA us just rewatching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Them. We are the creators and the audience. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, and then we like, you were like, Becca moved here and this year, and then Jamie moved here and this year. And finally we're all going to be together again. And then I'm like, yeah, and it will be great. We're going to take you guys with it. Like it was literally the wow. first vlog. And then it cuts to us at the airport. You okay. and I. Okay. And then it cuts to us on the airplane, and we're like, what up? Like, dude, we live. It's so cool. <laughs> and this is in what? 2006? But you know what? This is, if it, I think it was 2006, two years after Laguna Beach, which was formative. And maybe we could start this episode by an announcement. True. Oh, yes. Of great things to come. Oh, Oh, it's on, baby. Oh, it's so good. You have no idea what's about to go down right now. So I just happened 
to be somewhere where somebody suggested that we watch Laguna Beach because it was on Hulu. And I was like, hold up. <laughs> what? Because I don't know why, but I just assumed Laguna Beach was like lost to the sands of time. Yeah. No, it makes no sense. one is talking about rewatching no. it. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Me neither. So we started watching it and I was blown away by... It was weird because I had forgotten so much of what the show is actually about, but I was shocked at how much of an impression it had on me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, we were all just cosplaying fucking Laguna Beach, Dude. and I don't even think we were aware of it. <laughs> no. I think you're going to be floored, because have you watched it at all recently? No. I did. I watched The Hills, but not Laguna Beach, so if you guys don't know, Laguna Beach came first, and then they took one of the characters from Laguna Beach, and she had her own show called The Hills afterwards. So I have watched The Hills semi-recently, like within the last couple of years. Okay. Haven't watched Laguna Beach at all in like a million years. Okay. I genuinely don't remember jack shit from it. Uh, but it made me so happy and I was like, Shay, you need to watch this. And then Shay was like, what if we watched it for bonus content? And I was like, genius. <gasps> So if you are a Patreon subscriber mm-hmm. coming within the next couple of weeks, you are going to get Shay and I live watching an episode of Laguna Beach. Oh, yeah. And it's on Hulu. So if you have Hulu, you can just press play and watch along with us and it'll be like we're all hanging out. Hell yeah. And also, you guys, just so you know, we have different, um, what are they called? Like different tiers? Levels. You guys can straight up pay a dollar. Yeah, and we'll give it to you. And we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you good. Basically for free. <laughs> giving it to you good. 24-7. But no, it'll but, uh, only be on the Patreon. And now that Stacy and I literally live together. We're roomies, yo. Hell yeah. Thanks to this angel baby sitting <laughs> next to me. Um, Yeah, well, it'll be much more convenient to uh, create more content for y'all, okay? Yeah, and I'm just, I think this will be perfect because I, uh, we watched the whole first season together Mm -hmm. and then I listened to the Kristen and Steven podcast. So I'm just chock full of trivia and behind the scenes and all sorts of shenanigans. And I think me having all of this knowledge and then you watching again for the first time is going to be so great. I cannot wait. I really can't. My mind because... has completely changed. Really? And we'll talk about it. Oh, yeah, we did. In the yeah, bonus yeah, yeah, content. Yeah. But I've, I've done a 180. We used to have one opinion. We were on one person's side. And then now Stacy is saying, like, nah, fuck uh-uh. that bitch, basically. Exactly. And I can't wait to see what that means. So head so, on over to our Patreon. Probably, I want to say next week will probably be our first episode, right? Or maybe the week after that? Yes, God willing. Okay. So, like, sometime <laughs> in the next couple weeks. Definitely early April. For show. Yeah, early yeah, let's just say that. Early April we will have the first episode and we'll just keep them coming. And like literally, again, a dollar a month? Easy. Basically free. I mean uh, you could pay more if you have more, that'd be sick. Yeah, if you are um if you come into an inheritance yeah. or you found or fifty bucks. Yeah. Like I did one time at Knott's Berry Farm, I found like $180. That's incredible. When I was 18. Oh, that's magical. So I was like, um, <laughs> Rich now, you want lobster? You want steak? You want a Bentley? Got you. Like, my God is an awesome <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. We'll get into that song later, uh, a different episode. Mm-hmm. Any words today? <laughs> Marks our <laughs> 69th episode. Whoa. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what? Bam, bam, bam. I like how it's like 69th episode, the children's movie <laughs> Jumanji. <laughs> okay, but besides the children's movie, <laughs> hey Anthony, cue some sexual porn music. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Jumanji, bitch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the jungle. jungle! Oh, my God. <laughs> that is scary. We did not plan that. Wait, did you say that at the yes. same time as me? Yes. Oh, it's the power of the 69. And you know what's even crazier? <laughs> what? This movie, the beginning starts, guess what year? 1969. <gasps> it's a number 23 all oh, over dude, again. Dude, the number 73 has been following me around. 73, okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What year was this house built in? It might have been. I thought you said e- 73. It's either 72 or 73. I'm trying sure to remember. It's, it's probably is. You're probably it right. Is. It's definitely like... If not, like a year before or after. Dude, I'm pretty sure it is. Wow. But anyway, we are very excited. Although it is like a bittersweet because this is the last and final episode of Robin Madness. 
Yeah, and it's been so nice to hang out with Robin Williams for a full month. Like, he's so delightful. His yeah. character roles are so warm, especially the ones that y'all voted on. It's like, oh, uh, because mm-hmm. he does have some dark roles, but none, none of these. No. And honestly, next month is going to be just as warm and fulfilling. Mm-hmm. So I'm fucking excited. We'll announce that later. But yeah, I'm excited to hop into Jumanji because I hadn't. This was one of my like uh, staples growing up, and I haven't watched it since I was a kid. So there's so many moments that I was like, dude, I used to rewind this part over and over again. I forgot about this part that made me so happy. Like, it was really cool to dive back in and go back and be like, holy shit, I fucking love this movie. Yeah, I watched it a lot, too. I think it was one of those movies similar to Jurassic Park where it was, like, cool to like it. Ooh. And so it's like, everyone be like, yeah, I love Jumanji. Like, duh. Dude, I only (laughs) watched Jurassic Park last week for the first time. I think... I think we did talk about this. Did we? A little bit. Okay. And you said it, it holds up. It's scary. It was, yeah, I was like, dude, this is a fucking horror movie. Yeah. Like, like, and I've never heard anyone say that, but like, I was truly scared and I had full anxiety, like the whole movie. Oh, yeah. You're just like, no, 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 no. Like, oh, was God, it marketed God. as a kid's movie? I feel like it was. I can't remember if it's PG-13. I think it is PG-13. Mm. Okay. Like a tweeny movie. Yeah, I want to say. Well, I mean, so was, I know what you did last summer. That was PG-13. Oh, yeah, true. And that one is, mm, yeah. Well, the ratings come up in corporate bullshit. Should I get into it? Let's go into corporate bullshit. All right, let's do it. Corporate bullshit. Some bullshit. Jumanji came out December 15th, 1995. So a little holiday treat for everybody. I'm not sure if I saw this one in theaters. I don't think I did just because I don't think it's a movie that my parents would have wanted to see Mm. and I doubt we could have convinced them to see this one yeah they were persuadable (laughs) for some movies like if they were like like Harry Potter I know Mm. my mom did well maybe she didn't want to see it I shouldn't say that but she was like fine I'll take you like there were some (laughs) kids movies that we could be like no we have to totally um otherwise it was just wait till it comes out in blockbuster please for the love of god <laughs> and then you can go in your room yeah and watch and it you all watch you that want. Completely, and i'll do whatever the fuck i want exactly, to do all right cool which i get yeah it was directed by joe johnston who didn't do that many films not a not a huge filmography as a director but he did do honey i shrunk the kids ah. a classique Although Shay and I are partial to Honey, I Shrunk Ourselves. Dude, we need to cover that <laughs> Obscure time. movie month. We fucking Let's love that movie it. so much. I feel like we're the only ones who saw it and we're obsessed. The onion dip. That's oh, all I gotta say. We have onion dip in our fridge. I know. I haven't had any yet. Oh, it's bomb. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, he also directed Jurassic Park 3, which I'll be honest, I don't know what happens in Jurassic Park 3. They all get very muddled to me, but he directed that. I'm like, how did any other Jurassic Parks even come out, dude? Like, they kept it making those goddamn the dinosaurs. One. It should have just ended there. <laughs> After I saw that, I was like, wait, there's like so, like, they're still coming out. How? Yeah, even the reboots, I think, take place in a universe where it's failed so many times. It's like, it will not work, you mm-hmm. guys, okay? Why are, why are we doing this? Stop doing it. Why are we beating it to death? Okay, anyway. This movie stars Robin Williams, obviously. Hell yeah. Kirsten Dunst. Oh, which yeah. Which I wrote Killing a it. note and it cracked up because I wrote, we need to talk about Kirsten and then it auto-corrected to dubstep. <laughs> so we need to talk about Kirsten dubstep. <laughs> we need to talk about Kirsten dubstep. Because this is coming after Interview with a Vampire, which I just saw for the first time. It's crazy, isn't it? It was so much more violent and harrowing and fucked up than I ever imagined. I know. It's sexy, too, but it's fucked. It was only sexy for the beginning, though. I know. And then it gets horrible. Like, I was like, at first, I was like, this is fun and sexy. And then I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. No. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. This is weird and sexual. And then it gets, like, weirdly sexual with Kirsten Dunst, which I did not like. No. And she even talks about how that was like, she's like, that was fucking weird. Like, I don't like that. And I've heard that the book is worse. Uh. And I guess they toned it down for the movie fucking yikes yeah. like it dude yeah yikes that w- i mean at least those were all kids that's true this one was <clears throat> like creepy yeah that's yeah no but such a phenomenal actress and like what a weird role to go from like <laughs> interview uh, with the vampire to like jimanji to bring it on like perky cheerleader like what range she yeah she can do anything she straight up can do anything. She's so amazing. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Then you got David Allen Greer, Bonnie Hunt, Jonathan Hyde, and Bewey Newworth, 
who I always associate as the boss from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. And she's the one who plays the kids' aunts. Or That's aunt. where I know her from. Yeah. I was trying to think about it. I was like, what is she in where she plays like a Lonnie Dunn? Exactly. It's like, I'm so used to her with like her very <clears throat> blunt bob because I used to watch yes. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days like fucking constantly. So oh and so when I saw her, I was like, wait, wait a second. Wait a I never put minute. that together. Oh, hell yeah. I feel like especially as a kid, you could be very hair blind. Yes. Like if somebody has radically different hair, like you're not going to, you're not going to remember that they're the same person. Yeah. Clark Kent, I would not. I yeah, would not like clock. that guy's glasses. I don't know who that is. No, who the fuck is that? Um, it is 104 minutes long. So pretty close. Pretty long, but not, not super long. Yeah. Pretty it's close to a perfect time. The budget was 65 million, mm. which I thought was like interesting giving all the special effects. There's a ton of special effects. And they're pretty fucking good for 95. Yeah. Some of them are like, yeah. like the monkeys. Oh, <laughs> like boy. The lion? the lion looks great. It was so good. Mm-hmm. The big. Well, the big plants were actually real effects. But, like, yeah, the stampede. Like, yeah, there's just certain points that I was like, what the And it's like, they're all action scenes. So, it's like, <clears throat> those are always really expensive. And yeah. so, yeah, I was kind of surprised. I thought it'd be higher. Yeah. And it boxed $262 million, So, very profitable. Very good. Rotten Tomatoes. Not so great. I didn't think so. The critic score, 51%. Okay. Audience score only 63. Damn, that's not good. And what made me like take pause at this is these are pretty low, but we've had so many reboots of Jumanji. So it's like, I mean, clearly people like it. Yeah. Because there's the one with Jack Black and The Rock and the chick from Doctor Who, whose name escapes me, and Kevin Hart. And then there's like another one after that. Yeah. And there's an animated series. So it's like, clearly there's a lot of thirst. Yeah, Jumanji. I, yeah, I'm surprised by that because I feel like every kid, maybe it's just within the kid community, but like every kid our age, like slash in our generation, I feel like fucking loved Jumanji. Yeah. And I was fully expecting to not love it this time. I was like coming in being like, I feel like I'm not going to like it. But I was like pleasantly surprised, actually. Yeah, I just thought the audience would be higher. Um, Roger Ebert. Big surprise, he was not a fan. Here we fucking go. He only gave it one and a half stars. <clears throat> what? Which is pretty low. Damn, okay. Um, There wasn't really that many memorable quotes, but I'll just say that he um he took major issue with how scary it was okay. and the fact that it was rated PG. He thought that this was like a big bait and switch. He was upset for the children. He always thinks things are hella scary. He's such a fucking nerd. I'm going to throw him in my locker later. He is always like, think of the children. (laughs) Um, No, he thinks it's really scary. He was particularly offended by the little boy turning into a monkey. (laughs) And he said it was gratuitous cruelty. What? And I was like, oh, okay, bro. He seemed to chill with it. As yeah. soon as his pants ripped and, it lasts, and his tail like, came what, out? what, 10 minutes? It doesn't even last that long. No. I mean, it's yeah, it's like, what, 15, 20 minutes, like some shit like that. And also, he's still fully able to do everything he was able to do before. Yeah. and, and so. Well, and it actually, so he may have been right in some sense, because actually, this actor has gone on to give an interview where he said that putting the makeup on was like torturous. Like Grinch style. Did he mean? Oh, so did Ebert mean for the actor or for like? Well, that's what's weird. So in his review, he's talking about like plot wise, it wasn't necessary, and he thought that it looked bad. So he was saying it was like rude to do to that child actor because <clears throat> okay. it was like it shouldn't like it didn't help the plot, and so he took issue with that. But in reality, it turns out that on set it was actually a huge pain in the ass. I can see that, and it was like painful, and it took four hours. Yeah, to I do. can see that too. And I guess Robin Williams would, like, sit with him the whole time and talk about, like, how long his makeup took and Mrs. Doubtfire to try to make him feel better. Oh, my God. What a sweetie. And I guess he also made sure that the kids weren't doing a bunch of overtime because apparently, I don't know if it was the director or set runner, whoever was, like, pushing the kids to work these super long days. Bruh, come on. And Robin Williams was like, no, they're going to go home. And at this point, he had so much clout that they're like, I love him. I know. I'm like, that's the thing. If you have the clout, fucking use it. True. People will listen to you. True. And clearly they do. Uh, exactly. Wow. So the kid was like, he was great. And I thought that was mm. cute. So maybe Eber <laughs> is just very empathetic and was like, I don't know, picking up on this. But he, he, he really, really didn't like that part. Well, I can understand why, like, looking at an actor being like, this is fucking unnecessary Especially i think he's like it- they did you dirty like that's kind yeah. of his vibe like they they didn't have to fucking do that to you yeah. you look like a fool i could see that i can agree with that i think like character wise 
I don't think that it's that big of a deal, but as far as like the actor, like, yeah, he was young. Like mm-hmm. that would be torturous for yeah. that young IRL. person who, however old he was, like 10 or some shit like yeah, that. I think this was like hard to breathe. <clears throat> it looked yeah. like this was fully covered up. It was like very cool. Like in yeah. a way. Yeah. Damn. Um, back Del test. I don't think so. I kept waiting for, um, what's her name? Holly. Oh God. What's her name? Oh, sorry. Bonnie Hunt's character mm. and like Kirsten Dunn's character to maybe like talk, yeah. but it's like when they do, it's mostly about the boys or <laughs> I guess it's like sometimes about peril. Yeah. So maybe, but it's not like conversation. No, <laughs> not that I can remember. I don't think that they had a, f- an actual conversation, yeah, like an intentional conversation between the two of them yeah. or even between the aunt and no, no. Because they talk in the beginning, but it's all about Rob Williams' character as a kid. Like, there was a boy who lived during right. his kid. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Although, so funny how little of these movies pass. There was one scene where she, Kirsten Dunst was talking to the real estate agent, but she was talking about her parents, which included her dad. Yeah. So, I don't think that counts either. I don't think so either. Okay. Well, yet again, a movie from the 90s. <laughs> and I don't think the real estate agent is named, so then I wouldn't count oh. anyway. Okay, so yeah, no Bechdel test. Mm-mm. That's all I got for a corporate bullshit. That was beautiful, baby. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, my first note was uh, 69th episode set in 1969. Crazy. The stars are aligning. As usual. I, I was cracking up at how... Um, I do. I mean, I do agree with Ebert to a certain extent that it is a scary movie. It is pretty scary. It is scary. For being PG. It is very scary. It's pretty intense. Yeah. And I was cracking up because in the beginning... I think I know exactly what you're going to say. It's like these two kids are going to bury the board game. And one of the kids goes, what if someone digs it up? And the kid turns around slowly and there's like lightning striking. And he goes, may God have mercy on their soul. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and then wow, lightning and thunder. What a start to a film for children. <laughs> yeah. No, that part was like very... Like, I don't know if you guys ever watched Are You Afraid of the Dark? Mm. That was some Are You Afraid of the Dark shit. I was like, Whoa. even watching it this time, I was cracking up. And that was actually my first note after oh my God, 69. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, wow, we are off to the fucking races. <laughs> Truly. You're, <laughs> you're set, set up to tone. be like, fucking watch Great out setup. for this shit. It was effective. I was like, damn. Yeah. I hope nobody finds that board game. Like, but we please don't. don't. And then the next thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> when, oh, I wrote, yeah, when I was a kid and I saw that, I was like, holy fucking shit. Because I remember being, like, terrified of that because it's terrifying. And it might be the first time I heard that phrase, and I was like, that's a fucking metal phrase, bro. That one in uh, Billy Madison. And may God have Have mercy on your soul. (laughs) I award you no points. And may God have mercy mercy on your soul. Also, I wrote, it's such a trope in, in, like, movies that are set in the 60s or the 90s to have bullies on bikes beat you up for seemingly no fucking reason. For having a lady friend. Yeah. Like, which, again, seemingly no reason. Like, Mm. what, what... how old are you? Eleven? What do yeah. you have on this right. person? Well, like, and, and la- later he does say like everyone hates me because I'm a parish, and yeah. I. They don't really get into a lot of detail, but his father is like a shoe magnate. Yeah, and apparently his dad was too. So I think it's like this very lucrative, multi generational, rich ass motherfuckers. Hello, wealthy ass bitches. Named the parishes, which is like <laughs> such a fancy name. I know. And then when, after he's done getting his ass kicked, he goes to his house and it is a massive. Oh, yeah. It looks gigantic. like the White House, bro. It's so big and it's nice. Crazy. Yeah. And he's just like eating at this massive table all by himself. I'm so... I'm like, this is fucking sad. Get the kid a dog, something. Dude, it is. And it, their house is like a museum. Yeah. That's it's like the I... pictures are lit up. When I saw, you know, not to bring the Kardashians into this. No. But always. when I saw Kim Kardashian's like mausoleum of a house. I was like, that must suck as a kid to walk through and be like, everything is pristine. If I touch anything, my mom will fucking flip her shit. And like, yeah, that would be hella lonely. Although, I don't know. Do you think they even notice or they just have people cleaning it all the time? I don't know. I feel like they would be mad. See, I feel like they're oblivious. I don't, they, they I don't like, know about they her. They people to clean up stuff. I know, but I feel like Kim, I don't think she'd be mad that she had to clean. I think she'd be mad because she's like, I spent this amount of money mm. on it. It's not about, like, her cleaning. Mm-hmm. I think it would be, like, 
are you fucking kidding me? That wallpaper is from blah, 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 blah. Like, you know what I mean? See, I've never really watched a show, so I don't know their personalities. I guess I just assume they're too rich to be bothered. Okay. I think they're too rich to be bothered about a lot of shit, but when it comes to, like, the money they spend on certain things, they're, like, really fucking annoying. Oh, really? I can't even watch them anymore. Really? But it's also, like, that makes you look poor, honey. I know. I'm like, what? Like, why do you care? Right. Like, get that new money bullshit out of here. Yeah, bye. If you're so rich, why? who care? Yeah, why do you care? She, some of the others, like Courtney, doesn't seem like she's like that, but mm. Kim definitely seems like she's like that. Okay, I did watch Courtney's open door on Architectural Digest. Did you see that? Um, I haven't seen hers. I don't believe. Hers I watched was strange because my memory is it wasn't <clears throat> her entire house. It was like just her kids' playroom, but it was like very hostile to a child. Weird. Like it was like a loft with like a ladder, and then like not like sh- the hard square objects everywhere to like poke your fucking eye out and i was like that is so weird i don't know why you'd send your kid to play in this dude i (laughs) love cool i love that show i don't i haven't seen her episode i've um my two favorite episodes are uh casey musgraves oh i haven't seen it it's good it's new and dakota johnson's her house is so cool but that's when i realized i couldn't stand her yeah because i i hadn't seen her films yet and I thought she seemed cool and her house was really cool. But then she like reveals the depths of her Nepo babiness. And I was like, Dude. holy shit. Like, I know, this is Winston. Yeah. This came from Ch- Winston Churchill's yes. boat. And I'm just like, like, what the Yikes. Oh. And then I looked her up and like her mom's famous. And her <clears throat> grandma's, um, oh my gosh, what's her name from the birds? I know what you're talking about. Uh, I know. I hate that. I don't remember. I keep wanting to say Tulta Swinton and it's not. Tippy Hendren. Tippy. Yeah. Dude, there's, yeah. She's like, this is my crap. I also hate the way she talks. Oh my God. Because she has like we a weird about Madonna this last accent. episode or a couple episodes ago. Her little baby voice that I, I never raised when her eyes are invisible. Yeah. She's like, um, she's like, I love these limes and I love putting them in this little bowl and I love, like <laughs> she has like an a accent. rim. She's like, I love the limes and I love putting them in that. And I'm like, <laughs> like what are okay, you lady. fucking and doing, you can tell bro? she thinks it makes her like really cool and different. No, no. And uh, it's like, all right. She'll go and just be like, oh yeah, this is my library. He <laughs> he, don't spend a lot. I love these limes. I love these limes and I love putting them in this little bowl. I'm like, what accent are you doing? <laughs> no Mark. One no one knows. No one knows. Yeah, no, her house is sick, though. It's so fucking so sick. Cool. <laughs> I love the wood. I love the natural, mm. like, how how green it is. Yeah, it's like I a love... ranch style, which is sexy. Oh, it's so sexy. And then Casey Musgraves is just very, like, sensual and, like, airy. Mm. Like, when you watch it, you'll get it. You'll be okay. like, oh, yeah. It's I really did, like, um, Cara Delevingne's, like, crazy playhouse episode. Not that I think I'd ever want to live in the house, but she, like, she like built tunnels. Like, she built, like, a vagina tunnel. Yeah. yeah that you'd, like, slide down to get to another room. I think I remember. I only watched a little bit of it because I cannot fucking stand her to oh, save really? my life. But I did watch a bit of it and I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. And the fact that she lived with her sister, I was like, that's rad. Yeah, I did like that because you so rarely see that on those shows. It's always a partner or alone. Yeah. And I was not like, even that's friends. Cool. I'm like, bitch, you, you're not going to let friends live here? Yeah. Hello? Like a giant house? Like, right, I don't understand right. how on. people... I really don't get how people can live in giant houses by themselves. It makes no sense. It'd be scary. It'd be hella scary. I'm like, fuck, no. Oh, there was one that was like, it was so cool, but I was like, I'd be terrified. It was, um, it was like, I think he might've been a DJ for like Bad Bunny or something. I don't know. Some musician. Okay. But his house was like this beautiful glass palace, but it was like in the middle of the jungle. I know what you're talking about. A glass house in a jungle would be very scary. Dude, that is when a, or not when a stranger calls. Yeah, that's when a stranger calls, right? I think so. Yeah, not yeah. the strangers, but when a stranger calls. Dude. So hell scary. To the fuck. In the daylight, it would be like, huh. Mm-hmm. It's like a country house in the middle of nowhere. In the yeah. daylight, gorgeous, old school, like just feeling like you're like little house on the prairie at night. Boom, Horrorville. Right. And it's like, at least in the desert, you can like see for miles and you will see if somebody's like coming for you. Yeah. In the forest. No. You, uh, they could be hanging on the trees all day. Oh, you would truly. never see them. Yeah. You have no fucking idea. You have what's no idea. Mm-hmm. Could be dozens of people in there. Yep. You'd never know. No, you never know. Speaking of the jungle. Back to Jumanji. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, this concludes our promo for Archetypal Digest. Please sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. I didn't take like a whole lot of notes because I was really enjoying it, but I have like one note from each like era of the movie oh okay so the next one i have is boarding school big yikes Mm. i don't know if i would have wanted to go to boarding school when i was a kid either 
I and don't so know. many kids do. Oh, man, I think I'd want to go. And as I get older, the more I understand why, as a parent, you'd be like, you know what? It's time. You're going to go away for a little while. And I'll see you in the summer. <laughs> I would hate. I feel like if I was a parent, I would hate that. <laughs> like, I need a friggin' break. <laughs> I, I totally understand why parents would need a break, but mm-hmm. I would be, it would be weird to be away from your kid for that long. Like, that would be so weird. I think now it's like more weird. I. I'm not a parent, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I do feel like maybe people are, like, spending too much time caring for their children, and they, like, never, ever get any time away. And yeah. it's to the point where when they do that, they're, like, not able to really get away because they're, like, so mentally still engaged. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, think I think back they're... then they were fine just being like, I love you, bye. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> I mean, even as, like, an aunt, I feel like it would be so weird to, like, send my niece or nephew away for like months at a time like i would feel so weird if i was responsible for them yeah especially if you didn't see them over christmas break i think if you like you know you send them away in like august and you see them december like it's a long time but but like to go like a whole year would be crazy that would be i mean yeah like on some harry potter shit right like not seeing them for a whole year basically that's crazy the weasleys are like goodbye and they're like, bye-bye, bye-bye now. Have the Dursleys, forget about it. Have fun at Hogwarts. <laughs> Although, Hogwarts is a boarding school that I can stand behind. I would want to go oh, there hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting to go. Okay, now we're third, almost 33. And then I wrote their lion scene. Terrifying. Coming out of the shadows? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's when, that's when we're in the future time. Right. Um, so after little baby, oh, and I thought the kid actors for Robin Williams and, um, oh my God, why can't I remember her Bonnie. name? Bonnie Hunt's character. Yeah. Uh, looked a lot like them. They did. I was like, I believe that they grew into these actors. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I could see that. Especially the kid that plays Robin Williams. He yes, like really like, looks wow. like him. Oh, yes. Yeah, so they're playing the game and then he gets sucked in and she like loses it. And then it like fast forward 26 yeah. years, I think. 26 years. To Kirsten Dunst and her bro. Sorry, bro, that you're not as famous. I'm I know. I don't know. I've never seen him in anything else, bro. I want to say. I don't think he did a lot. <laughs> I'm going to take a look while you... while you. Uh... Okay. Um, but the fast forwarding. And then I was cracking up because they're in their giant house that their auntie just bought. And this like bat inspector is like showing them around. And he's, and he's telling them this terrifying story about how a little boy around their age was murdered, probably by his father, chopped up into little pieces, and put into the walls. Yeah, I'm like, hello? I was like, why would you ever say that to yeah, children? Yeah, why would you tell a child that? Very intense beginning of the film. Faux show. He was in The Borrowers, dog. Fucking the love what? that movie. The Borrowers? Like, the oh. little... Okay. <clears throat> I love that movie, too. Is that an obscure movie? It is an obscure movie. Should I add it to Obscure Movie Month? Also so weird, because, okay, uh, this dude that I've been, like, homies with and I've been talking to for the last couple weeks, bruh, he just brought up The Borrowers to me today. What? That is so weird. Weird! And he said it. <laughs> that is so <laughs> weird. I'm gonna say it. Okay. He told me, because the, the, um... Basically, there's a picture of me in a bikini, right? So my yiddies are, like, big and juicy and voluminous. He said, and I quote, I wish I could shrink to, like, the borrower's size so that I could jump on them like cartoon trampolines. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I like how he just trusted that you were like, yeah, I know the borrower. <laughs> that is so great. I haven't thought about that movie in years. We owned it on VHS. Yes. And they're like little people they're, coming out of the, yeah. the thimble or whatever. Yeah, they're like little action figures. And they just steal your shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. They like sleep on like thimbles and shit. Yeah, that's know. so cute. Oh my God. Wow. Taking me back. Yeah, we def have to watch that. I fucking love that movie. And I think, isn't, um, what's his name? John, whatever his name is, is in it? Goodman. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, it's so good. But yeah, I love the guy scaring the children. Um, I also had the thought that it would be super fun to restore an old house like that if you were unemployed and had a pile of money. Had hella money. Oh, that would be fun. It'd be so fun. If that was, I like, could see job, us doing hella fun cool shit. It'd be so cool. Like, if, that's all, if you just like woke up every day and that's all you had to do. Ugh, amazing. It's like, today, we need to figure out the jacuzzi room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First things first, <laughs> baby. First things first, you guys. And my ice room. I would have an ice room for sure. Oh, yeah. That'd be sick. And yeah. a jade room. 
Oh, a J. Oh, yeah. okay. We it's just, just need like to go a back giant to that spa. I'm like, <laughs> okay, this is the Imperial Korea spa in Sahara. Like, we need to go up. back. I the miss jig it. Jig is up. I miss it so much. That shit is. It's so fun. I, I miss it's open it there. again. Really? I'm sure. I wonder if it's the same. There used to be a group on you guys. I, know. Mm-hmm. I don't. I doubt it. It was only like 19 bucks or something like that. Okay. Yeah. It was magic it was so with sick. inflation. It's probably like fifty five dollars, but you know what? It would be worth it's it for a spot day. Hell yeah! All right. Anyways, so yeah, after the lion appears, it's pretty much like horror after horror for the rest of the movie. Like truly, no breaks. No. They link up with uh, Bonnie Hunt's character, and then it's like, <clears throat> here we go. Mm-hmm. Bam, bam, bam! And I love that she's just like. One of the first, like, big scenes of her is just her on the phone with her psychiatrist. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm... No one believes me. It's fucking awesome because, like, that is exactly what would fucking happen. Yeah. No one would believe you, obviously. Yeah, like, oh, I saw my best friend get sucked into a board game? Cool. They're like, cool, toots. We're putting mm-hmm. you in a padded room forever. Cool. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Speaking of toots, just real yeah. quick. Did you see that horrible video of some lame Republican asking a pilot what her duties as a stewardess are? no i don't know what the bill was it was like benefits related to pilots or something and this lady pilot she's (sighs) sitting there and she says she's a pilot i don't know like seven times i'm dead and then his very first question is can you describe your average day as a stewardess what if she's like um i am a pilot like i said but before he said it he literally said toots what's an (gasps) average week look like and some people are saying like he just like stuttered or something but no. he fully says toots. No. What's an average week? I can't believe. <laughs> that is... Toots. I mean, that's like... It's such a joke. I know. Like, that's... Hey, toots, what's your stewardess hey, job toots, like? And she's like, I... Give me a quick BJ in the cockpit. Right, like, like I flew for 3,000 hours. That's crazy. <laughs> the shit that women have yeah. to go through, babe. Okay. But anyways... Unfucking believable Back to Bonnie Hunt and her psychiatrist. Let's Great scene. That shit is... I know. You're like, wait, as soon as you said toots, it brought me back. I know. I was like, I got it. I got to spread the word about this guy. Um, I wish I remembered his name so I could like at him like that. But I'm sure we could look it up so The easy. video went viral. So if you... You'll see. You'll what a little see. bitch. Um, but yeah, no, that's exactly what would happen. Like, no one would believe her. Everyone would be like, she's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's so fucking yeah. sad. And she's what, like 14? Yeah. Like, that's so horrible. Terrifying. <sighs> and then she's missing forever. Yeah. At that point, never to be seen again. And then she had to like convince herself, being like, I hallucinated that, and really, his dad murdered him. That's the other Ugh, sad part, is like, yes, everyone just believes he like bullied. brutally murdered his kid. Yeah, with like zero evidence. Yeah. Yeah, but that can't happen. Mm-hmm. Only takes one eyewitness to be like, I saw it. And then everyone's like, well, it okay. must have <laughs> Case closed. Um. Oh, yeah, and the dude that came up with basically Air Maxes. Yeah. The fucking fuzz now? Mm-hmm. trash and he was like uh i was laughing in the part where he was like i should have been a fireman I'm like, yes! <laughs> yeah you should have okay. you should have bro what's up i thought it might be fun to go through the various horrors and ask yeah. you which one you would hate the most okay okay so i think this is basically in order um there's a lion i mean then there's mischievous monkeys mm-hmm. rhinos and elephants stampeding about um giant insects poison darts plants that try to kill you snakes birds mosquitoes a big ass storm spiders crocodile quicksand or the big game hunter okay the hunter is probably the most annoying one the most annoying. I don't know why. It's so annoying. It, it actually annoyed me while I was watching. I'm like, please just go do something else. Like, you're so fucking annoying. Also, there's so many, like, other animals you could be hunting right now, and you're mm-hmm. choosing me, bro? The most dangerous game. Well, it's because he's got a fucking axe to grind with Robin Williams. But why? I don't really know. I kind of miss that. I mean, uh, it's cast by the same person as his dad. dad. So you're getting, like, daddy issues. Yeah. And he's, like, facing his greatest fear. I guess that's... Yeah, that's it. So I'd say... Like, I don't know why. I think he does just say something like, man, was the most dangerous guy. Oh, that's true. It's like, okay. And Robin Williams is like, he just has always had it out for me. Yeah, like, there's exactly. no actual... Yeah, yeah, there's not a whole lot of explanation. Um, But besides him, I would say... 
I would love the monsoon for the rain, but like to be like swimming in water with like nowhere to like there's no like land necessarily mm, to get mm-hmm. to and then have just fucking alligators. Yeah. Just like chilling about to like like giant alligator. That would be really fucking scary. Also, anything flying would just be mm. a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Cause they can just come out of nowhere. Mm. And like there's not much you could do except for like swat and like try to hide, but like I feel like their little wings can grrr. those are probably the ones that I like the least. Okay. That what makes about sense. you? Um, quicksand. <gasps> the quicksand. Because like, not only are you drowning, but yeah. like, there's nothing you can do, and you will yeah. slowly suffocate. Blech. I wrote a note about quicksand. Oh, really? Yeah, I said, uh, I said, can we fucking talk about quicksand? And then he said, I thought I'd be swimming in that bitch every goddamn day of my life because of all the movies, TV shows, and books that mention this shit consistently when we were kids. Is this where it started? Maybe. But maybe this is the first time we were introduced to the concept of quicksand. And we're like, wait a goddamn minute. And, and there's always just like pits of it. I remember too, uh, Princess Bride. There's mm. a bunch of quicksand everywhere. And I was like, mm-hmm. what? And it kind of looks just like sand. So living in the desert, I was like, is there just going to be pools of quicksand everywhere? Oh, yeah. I Yeah, I just like, when I was younger, this and like Bermuda Triangle, I thought mm. would come up way more than they ever do. And Bermuda Triangle might be because of Adam's family. <laughs> But then also it's like mentioned randomly all the time mm-hmm. in like other media. But you're right. Adam Stanley was the first one. Mm-hmm. And I think this was the first one for quicksand. And both are just brought up all the time in like so much children's media that I'm like, why are we horrifying kids with this like random shit that doesn't come up ever? Like, does it exist? Is that a dumb question? I think Is- quicksand does. Okay. Well, how does it work? It must just be like sand above air. Like, I don't get it. Let me look it up. Because like, now okay. I'm curious. Now I'm yeah, like, I'm not sure. Just like physically, why? <laughs> you know? Because I mean, presumably it has to go somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Or like a sinkhole that just filled with sand. It says quicksand, also known as sinking sand, mm. is a colloid consisting of fine granular material such as sand, silt, or clay, and water. It forms in saturated loose sand when the sand is suddenly agitated when water and the sand cannot escape it creates a liquefied soil that loses strength and cannot support weight but then Mm. it's like then where but could you could you sink up into your eyeballs like is it that deep maybe it depends on like the water level as well Mm. because isn't it water and sand Mm -hmm. so maybe just depending on how much water there is and how Mm. much sand like Maybe you can just like fully get sucked under. Yeah. Oh, also tons of quicksand in Super Mario 64, which I played a lot of. Dude, there is a lot of quicksand in Mario. Mm-hmm. That shall eat you up. Oh my God. And you know what? Like, that was probably my first introduction. And then this. Yeah. And then I was like, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's fucking everywhere. <laughs> I didn't even think of it. There's It'll shit get, everywhere. There's shit on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> quicksand everywhere. Uh, but yeah, no, like quicksand, Bermuda Triangle brought up way too much, too much in my fucking life when too I was much. a kid that it's like no wonder I was terrified of this shit and I guess it exists but like I've never experienced it so me neither thank god thank god knock knock who's knock there on oh <laughs> you're like oh this is like quicksand <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were telling a joke. <laughs> Freaking idiot. I'm just like, You're not an idiot. I worded it wrong. <laughs> it's my fault. No, but that was awesome. Quicksand. Ah! Oh, Christ. That's anyway. Um, anyway. But yeah, I just have, I, I was just noting the perils. Um, because it's yes. like I said, it's just peril after peril. And they always overcome. Dude, truly. When you guys listen to this, comment on our Instagram post and tell us which one you would want to face the least and then i do love that i had such a happy ending yes like not only do they prevail over all of the horrors yeah but then fucking robin williams bonnie hunt get to go back to when they were kids i know and live their life all over again and they get to meet kirsten dunst and her brother later and they prevent their parents from dying like it's amazing and they remembered it and they were pregnant with their own kid (laughs) And it. it ended at a Christmas party, and it was a holiday movie. Okay. Boom. Feel good. I was just like, what a gift it would be <clears throat> to be able to go back and live your life all over again with all the wisdom you have now. Absolutely. It could be so fun. It would be. Like, yeah, I feel like um, 
I've always been like, no, I would never do that because then things would change. But like, it would be fun to go back and just like see, like fuck around and find out. Right, and it's like, well, you've already had the one experience, so mm-hmm. like that that can't be taken away from you. Like they they had that all of that still in their right. brains. Yeah, now they just get to like do it again a little differently. Totally, I'd do it. A little reincarnation, really, but like you still in the same body for fun. I do cool. it. It would be very cool. I would like that. Yeah, I was like, I forgot just how like happy this ending is, which I think it they is. needed after all the um horrible peril the kids was gonna say it definitely made up for like all the actual dog shit that they all face the entire fucking movie yeah but then like they really kind of didn't in the end like they actually didn't suffer at all really because yeah Yeah. it doesn't actually happen yeah only but they remember the suffering Mm -hmm. so at least there's that like they at least the kids don't remember that's what i mean it's like it's like a perfect yeah it's awesome but it sucks that they still had to go through 26 years yeah. of being tortured and being alone. Yeah. But I love how they were like, and I don't want you to leave me again. That is so cute. It is so cute. Meant to be. Mm-hmm. Loves it. They're adorable. And their baby would be so fucking cute, may yeah, I just say. Would. And they get to be living in the giant house. And it's just a great feel-good ending, really. And <clears throat> his dad is still alive. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yes, you're right. Well, how does he die in the alternate timeline? I don't think they said. It takes a while because he like tries to find him for a long time. Yeah, I bet it was just like heartbreak. I yeah. bet that's like implied. And everyone think you're a freaking child murderer. Yeah, oh, that sucks. God. And then in on the gravestone, I think the dad passed away first, and then the mom only passed away like three months later oh, or something. Really, really oh, sweet. Oh. And ninety one. Yeah. Um. That's about all my notes, honestly. I have a couple. I'll just do a couple quick here things here. Okay, let's see. Um, in quotes, twenty six year, twenty six years buried in the deepest, darkest jungle, and I still became my father. Goddamn the trauma. That's yeah, crazy. that is a deep ass line. Also, the like um, monologue that he had of like, you don't know fear. Like that shit was crazy. That went and very, very intense for a PG movie. I do agree with Ebert on that. Like, yeah. This, I- might have been a pg-13 yeah i, I oh, agree with that too maybe they bribe some people also when the house when they walk into the house and it's half jungle half house it's like fuck yeah oh i know i remember being like i want to live there yes. can they just keep it like that dude i uh i think i've mentioned this on the podcast but i dated i was long distance dating this australian man and every time he would tell me I can't wait to, I can't wait till you come here or however fucking Australian stock. I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> I'd be like, uh, yeah, I don't feel like living in like Jumanji land because everything he ever showed me was terrifying at every corner. Really? Oh my God. Like, like he would he'd walk, just send you pics. Like, look what I found. He would walk out of his house and I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. Okay. When I say this, there would be a spider this oh, fucking big. no. Like, no, just no, outside no, chilling. No, 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 no. There'd be a kangaroo down the road who's ready to whoop your ass. Yeah, like, they were buff as the fuck. fucking face. They have six packs, okay? Yeah, no, straight up, like, gold's gym. Just, yeah. like, ready to fucking <laughs> pounce. I'm like, what the fuck? Kangaroos are fucking so weird. And then... <laughs> like, I like, cannot believe they exist. And then the little Joey comes out and is, like, just as buff. It's like, many me and Dr. Evil. I'm like, please. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem real. No, and then, like, just, like, every creature ever, the weather was so hot that, like, they made specialty foods to make sure you were, like, like, the children were nourished enough. Like, shit is so crazy over there. I was literally scared of going there because I was like, I'm gonna die. Mm. Like, I'm not used to this shit. It is, like, it is wild. And they talk about this in the famous book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, which I recommend reading if you haven't. (laughs) But he talks about how when, like, Pangea happened and Australia broke off, mm. it was so remote for so long that the animals were able to get insane oh. without any human predators. Oh or, like, on other continents, continents, humans were, like, hunting animals, so they kind of got smaller and smaller. Yeah. And, like... That makes sense. Or, like, the big ones were, like, hunted out of existence because they have so much meat. But in Australia, they weren't being hunted, and they were just popping off. And it wasn't until, like, the aboriginals went there that people got there. Yeah. And it's just like, like, holy shit. It's amazing they survived. It's amazing that anyone still survived. Like, it it is genuinely the things that he would send me. And he was so cash. And he was also just like a very outdoorsy dude anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, none of the shit bothered him. He, like, gave tours and, like, the random desert and shit. But, like, I was like, 
every time he'd send me something like that, I'm like, you're not making me want to go there. Like, you're you just right. need to come here, bruh. I'm scared. I, like, I want to I wanna watch you surf. I want to do that whole shit. Like, that's hot. That's dope. Um, I don't want to no, no thank you to anything moving. Thanks. And I'm like, please. Like, and I'm not even that much of a scaredy cat. But, like, when it came to, like, the shit that he would show me, like, ha, ha, almost stepped on this jellyfish, mate. And it would be, like, the worst shit I've ever seen. I'm like, yeah. Like, he could have literally like died. like him off with his little no, tentacles. He's just like, ha, 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 oh, well. And I'm just like, what are you oh, well, talking about? No. It was crazy. Okay. Anyways, so I called it Jumanji, Jumanjiville. I also wrote, <laughs> there's always also giant spiders mm. in these, like, 90s mm. and 2000s movies. Yeah. And, like, so many of It's such an easy way to type, tap into primal fear, you know? Very true. Very true. Um, then I wrote, homie looked at the fucking camera once he found the axe. The little <laughs> the little boy. He literally looked into the camera He's and like, then made a run for right. it. You're right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, a, like one moment breaking the fourth wall for like, whatever huh? reason. Mm-hmm. I was like, why is he looking at me? And then he, like... <laughs> You looking at me? Yeah, I'm are like, you get, looking you at fucking me? looking at me, thoughts? We're going to have a problem? <laughs> We're going to have a fucking problem in this Jumanji jungle. What's going on? <laughs> um, and then I wrote the, any last words? Jumanji. Like, that's mm-hmm. sick. And then they win the game. And then the last note I wrote was, uh, I think what we have to take away is we have the power to overcome our fears. That's right. Even if it takes uh, 26 years and a couple tries. Yep, and then finding the love of your life who is really the girl that you had a crush on the whole time, baby. Love it. Well, if you have trivia, I actually took the liberty of finding a quiz in advance. Oh. Because I thought it might be hard because there's so many Jumanji movies. My smart And in fact, I couldn't find a good one for the 1995 version, but I did find a good, just which Robin Williams character are you, which I thought would be a nice way to end the month. Very nice. Okay, cool. So, trivia. Here we go. What animal was causing complete havoc in the kitchen? Oh, God. It's not the monkeys, right? It is the monkeys. Oh, okay. It is the monkeys. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. What was Carl's nickname at the shoe factory? Oh, my gosh. Oh. That one's a little hard. They say it in the beginning. I think they say it in the beginning. They also say it... When he recognizes him, right? Mm Mm-hmm. God. I can't remember it. Soul Man. Soul. I was like, okay, we get it. He's black. I know. I'm like, please. (laughs) Soul Man. Soul Brother. Yeah, I'm like, can you please, please stop saying that, Robin Williams. Please. (laughs) I can't believe I forgot about Zol. I know. What is Sarah's profession? I don't remember any of this. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm, no, because no, okay. I will. I will confess, the listener. I watched this like a couple weeks ago. So it's not that is as true. Fresh in me mind. That is true. She's a psychic. She is a psychic. Yeah. Okay. And that's like her profession because she lives okay. in this house and people just come because they think of her as like the crazy, like weird You're spiritual right. lady. Wow. So that's her I'm profession. Not doing so hot. You're not going to... I don't know if you'll know this oh, one either. I feel not, so bad. Me. I wrote, what's the store that the police car drives through? The store? Like, the, like, hardware store? It's like a... It's almost like a Walmart. Yeah. But it's named something weird. Okay, think of... Um, I like big butts. Sir mix a lot? Very close. <laughs> Sir saves a lot. Sir saves a lot. <laughs> Which I'm like, what? <laughs> Is there, like, a suit of armor or No. I, yeah. Okay. I was yeah. like, I do think they do something with that theme. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I fucking choked, bro. It's okay. I I also watched it like right before we recorded this. So that, you know, and she only watched it weeks ago. So. And that is normally how I do it. This was rare, though, that I just so happened to have watched this a couple weeks ago. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to wonder. No, no, I get it. No, and those were hard questions. Those are very specific questions. So. Thanks. Stacey got a 100. All right. <clears throat> yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, this is a 15-question quiz from Magic Quiz. Ooh. Which classic Robin Williams character are you? Oh, God, so much fresh. Okay. Robin Williams will forever be remembered as a man who made us laugh. What do you want to be remembered for? Being kind and helping others? Daring to be different and interesting? Inspiring others to live their best lives? Or supporting my loved ones to achieve their dreams? Ah. Those are all good. They're all so cute. Um, there's inspiring others to live out their dreams or live their best lives yeah cute okay you can be anything you want if you could start all over which profession would you try to get into actor comedian doctor teacher uh actor actor although i do kind of do that yeah okay robin williams as a man and an actor taught us many life lessons which quote is most inspiring to you tell the truth just because they don't love each other doesn't mean they don't love you. Mm. 
make your life extraordinary. You're only given one little spark of madness. You mustn't lose it. The most radical act anyone can commit is to be happy. Or, real loss is only possible when you love something more than you love yourself. Bangers, all of them. The last one. Oh, love it. Hee <laughs> hee. Okie dokie. The local comedy club is paying $100 to whichever amateur does the best celebrity impersonation. You practice the mannerisms of whom? I wonder if your guy's on here. <clears throat> I hope it's so. It's Robert De Niro. Yep. But the <laughs> options are Donald Trump, Samuel L. Jackson, Taylor Swift, or Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of those I'd be bad at. Some of those I would never try. I think a Taylor Swift impression would be pretty boring. No offense, Swifty. No, would I mean? But I don't know if anyone would know that you're doing an impression. I would just do her dance move, like her very dramatic dance moves, yeah. and then hopefully people would know. Like, her yeah. Be like, yeah. <laughs> hopefully people would know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I would probably try a Christopher Walken. That's a good one. He's such a distinctive voice. I can't do it right now, but I feel like if I really honed in, I could I could probably do it. I yes, you could. Oh, thank you, okay, honey. Robin's favorite celebrity to do an impersonation of was Jack Nicholson. Yes. Which Jack Nicholson movie would you spend all day watching? Mm-hmm. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining, The Departed, A Few Good Men, Chinatown, or As Good as It Gets. I haven't watched the last two. Um If I had to watch what was the question? Like if I had to... You could spend all day watching. All day. I love The Shining, but I don't know if I could watch it all day. All of these are very intense. Honestly, I would choose Anger Management, but it's not on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the only fun one. These I are know. all very serious. What, oh, I'd probably go with The Departed. I really like that movie. That's the great. Departed. It's also very intense. Yeah, it is intense, but I do like it. When you're happy and you know it, do a dance. What song makes you want to rip up the flow? Cute. Beat It by Michael Jackson. I'm so excited by Pointer Sisters. Fortunate Son by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Let's Stay Together by Al Green. Oh. People Got to Be Free by The Rascals. Or Ride of the Valkyries by Richard Wagner. Let's Stay Together. Let's Stay Together. Mm-hmm. So okay. in Robin used life. to own a vineyard in California, which you said was weird like Gandhi owning a delicatessen. <laughs> I guess because he didn't drink. <laughs> what kind of wine do you like to drink? Pinot Grigio, Merlot, Shiraz, Chardonnay, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc. Probably Merlot more Merlot. than any of those. Pinot Noir is one of my faves, but oh. I'd probably say Merlot out of all those. I like a red. A red, red wine. Red, red wine. Okay, your coworker is having a birthday. Or no. <laughs> <laughs> birthday. That's so long. Your coworker is having a bad day. Oh, <laughs> Very oh no. Different. How do you cheer them up? Tell them a few jokes, laughter is the best medicine, or talk it out and lead them to rationalizing the problem. There's only two oh, options for this. talk one. it out for sure. I don't want to, like, if oh, someone's no. having a bad day, I, I don't want to, like, joke one. with them. Wait, what you I say? accidentally clicked tell a joke, and I don't know how to go back. Oh, that's okay. I'm so sorry. I've thrown off your results. I'm like, I would stupid, never stupid, tell stupid. a joke. Okay. It's okay. Do you prefer a funny Robin or serious Robin? Ooh. Honestly, serious Robin. Ooh, serious. I love okay. serious Robin. Robin Williams brought out the best in his fans. What's the best part about your personality? Oh. Um, caring and selfless. Big thinker. Understanding. I'm lots of fun. I always want to ask Stacey. I'm not going to ask Stacey. <laughs> I would say I'm really understanding. Understanding. I try to be really fucking understanding. Everyone has a dark side. At your worst, you can be manic, closed off, overbearing, loud, idealistic. I don't know, some of these aren't bad. Hmm. How, how would you describe manic? <laughs> oh, no. I just clicked. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I have to warn you, this is very touchy. I don't even know oh, what I no. clicked. Okay. I'm not. I, I'm afraid for myself it's to do it. It's in the Lord's hands. <laughs> you know okay. what? Robin Williams was an avid cycling enthusiast. How do you like to get your blood pumping? What do you know? We both like cycling. Jogging? Kettlebell? Or dancing? Dancing. <laughs> or kettlebells. <laughs> okay. Oh, last question. There's only 14, 13 questions. Okay. How would you rate this quiz? <laughs> I loved it. It was pretty okay. <laughs> Not great. <clears throat> Wait, I loved it. Pretty. Uh, it was pretty okay or not great? Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> Even though I fucked up. Being that. Well, that, that's not your fault. And then I have to watch an ad to see the results. It's a lady. These fools. <clears throat> advertising a movie called. Holiday Horror Story. Amazing. Don't know what that means. You're Sean McGuire. 
I don't know what film that's from. Wise and experienced. You know what buttons to push on the toughest of personalities. <gasps> Having had a rough past. Oh, is this Yes. The, yes. What is it called? Matt Damon movie. Uh, why am I forgetting what it's called right now? Mathematics. Why am I forgetting? Goodwill Hunting. Yes, Goodwill Hunting. Okay. Having had a rough past, use tough love to motivate others into achieving their goals. You live your life without regrets, as the beauty of life is made of the good and the bad. That's a good one. Yes. And I love that movie. Exactly. We have to cover that at some point. Yes. Robin Williams will forever be remembered as a man who made us laugh. What do you want to be remembered for? Being kind and helping others, daring to be different and interesting, inspiring others to live their best lives, or supporting my loved ones to achieve their dreams. Supporting my loved ones to achieve their dreams. You're killing it. You can be anything you want. If you could start all over, which profession would you try to get into? Actor, comedian, doctor, or teacher? Comedian. Hell yeah. Robin Williams, as a man and an actor, taught us many life lessons. Which quote is most inspiring? Tell the truth. Just because they don't love each other doesn't mean they don't love you. Make your life extraordinary. You're only given one little spark of madness. You mustn't lose it. That one. Yes, I like that one. The local comedy club is paying $100 to whichever amateur does the best celebrity impersonation. I do Donald Trump. Because yeah. We were, we've been doing Donald Trump impressions since we oh, were like in middle school. You're fine. We always hated that man. We always notoriously on fucking sight. hated him, okay? One sight. Robin's favorite celebrity to do an impression of was Jack Nicholson. Which Jack Nicholson movie could you spend all day watching? I Again, all the ones they list, I I would never want to watch all day, but I do love The Shining the most. I yeah. I love The Shining. I love The Shining too. I was just like, I don't know if I could watch that all day. When you're happy and you know it, do a dance. Which song makes you want to rip up the floor? Beat It by Michael Jackson. I'm so excited by the Pointer Sisters. So gay. Love that song so mm-hmm. much. Fortunate Son by Creedence Clearwater Revival, CCR. Let's Stay Together by Al Green, People Got to Be Free by The Rascals, or Ride of the Valkyries by Richard Wagner. People Got to Be Free. Robin used to own a vineyard in California, which he said was (laughs) weird, like Gandhi owning a delicatessen. What kind of wine do you like to drink? I like a Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, yeah. Your coworker's having a bad day. How do you cheer them up? (laughs) This is the one I fucked up for you. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely think you should talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, I can't. Like, if someone's having a bad day, I'm like, <laughs> a rabbi and a priest walking into a bar. You go, like, knock, knock, and I go, who's there? <laughs> like, quick sand. Ah! <laughs> Do you prefer funny Robin or serious Robin? A uh, funny Robin. Hee <laughs> hee. Robin Williams brought out the best in his fans. What's the best part about your personality? Caring and selfless, big thinker, understanding, or I'm lots of fun. Uh, wait, what was it again? It is Robin Williams brought out the best in his fans. What's the best part about your personality? You're caring and selfless. You're a big thinker. You're understanding. Let's or... go, big thinker. That's true. Hey, big thinkers. Think hey, a little bit. Big thinker. Toots. Ready for the big <laughs> thinker, everybody. Everyone has a dark side. At your worst, you can be manic, closed off, overbearing. Loud or idealistic? I really wonder which one I accidentally clicked for you on. I know. <laughs> um, closed off. Boom. Robin Williams was an avid cycling enthusiast. How do you like to get your blood pumping? What do you know? We both like cycling. Hell no. Jogging, kettlebell, or dancing? Dancing. Yeah, baby. Dancing queen. She is. And then last one. Last question. How would you rate this quiz? I loved it. It was pretty okay. It was or, pretty okay. Oh, great. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was being too nice. Quiz. Okay. No, don't Adrian Cronauer. Who? From the Viet. Oh, good morning, Vietnam. Okay. Whatever. In a world full of strict business, you're the splash of color that lights up the room. <laughs> you use your personality to spread joy to those who need it most, and you're not afraid to be different. Even with your joking and lighthearted nature, you know when to be serious. It's a tough world out there, but you can handle it. Wow. Thanks, Magic Quiz. Thanks. <laughs> and wait, which uh, it's on Magic Quiz? or Magic Quiz. Hey, guys, go on. Magic Quiz, which Robin Williams character are you if you want to take the quiz? Well, it's the end of this era in We've particular. And I had so much fun this month because like pretty often Stacy and I, uh, we do months that are themed where there's usually like one in there that I haven't seen, one in there that I'm like, I'm not sure if I'll like, it's not really my steez, but this month, all four movies, I Bangers. was like, 
I'm going to be so comforted this month. And I needed to be because there were so many big changes happening this month. So I'm so glad that y'all chose the perfect movie. So yeah, thank we you so much. You to thank. Thank you, democracy. Yeah, thanks, democracy. And again, don't attack us, okay? Uh, we didn't choose don't the, shoot the Don't shoot the poll workers, okay? Yeah, exactly. But uh, we love you so much. And we'll obviously see you next month. Um, should we introduce next month to everybody? Sure. So, um... We have a friend of the podcast. Her name's Anna. I've known Anna since... Well, we've both known Anna since mm-hmm. middle school. And um, she was our manager during the first Shrek Fest. Mm-hmm. So, shouts out. She let us stay in her crib and she put Drove us up. Us around. So cool. We've definitely talked all about her. If you guys want to listen, go back to uh, the Shrek Fest recap, the first one. Um, but she's a huge supporter and friend of the podcast and her birthday is April 27th. So we told her, Hey, April is now an April and April. And she chose four fucking bangers for y'all, uh, for next month. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. We'll have a whole new theme song for the month as well. Yes. It's like fan time. Yeah. It's going to be the best, but we love you guys so much. We love you. And we appreciate you so much. And again, um, Keep Robin Williams in your heart, you know? Stay stay Absolutely. light, stay fun, and... Um, stay sexy. Stay sexy as, <laughs> as we know we are. So, love you so much, and we'll see you in April. Love you. Bye. Love you, bye. Thank you for listening. Shout out to I Have No Mouth for our delightful theme song and Whitney Vertucci for our beautiful podcast art. And all of this couldn't be possible without our amazing producer, Anthony, a.k.a. DJ Munchausen. If you have questions for us or would like to advertise with us, please email us at blockbusterwives at gmail.com and please join our Patreon for exclusive bonus content. As always, please rate, subscribe, and tell all your friends about us. We love you. We don't need your help. I don't think so. You think monkeys, mosquitoes, and lions are bad? That's just the beginning. I've seen things you've only seen in your nightmares. Things you can't even imagine. Things you can't even see. There are things that haunt you in the night. Then something screams. Then you hear them eat. And you hope to God that you're not desert. Afraid? You don't even know what afraid is. You will not last five minutes without me. So... Gonna help us? I'll watch. I'm not afraid.